is it aspirin? Is it they sit down and rest? You know, is it they put their mind on something else? Maybe stress is causing this. So along with that, what are their symptoms that go with it? They're short of breath. Are they nausea, having vomiting? Are they sweaty, diaphoresis? They have weakness and fatigue. Um, some of the ACLS videos, as we play the rest of those, you'll see a lot of these, them having these symptoms when they're having their um, heart attacks or problems. Have they had a weight loss or gain, a significant weight loss or gain recently? Are they having syncope or palpitations? And what about the intermittent father patient? What is that intermittent father patient? Sydney, do you know what that is? I don't know. Okay, that's okay. A lot of, so it's a group of symptoms characterized by pain, cramping, weakness in the calf muscle. So it comes and goes, but it's intermittent. That's okay, that's a trick question, Sydney. Okay, so here's our clinical database. So along with physical, remember we need a good history. So we're gonna interview the patient, the family, of course the name, what is that complaint? What is their general state of health? Have they always been healthy and this is like something out of the blue? Or is it been slowly working up to this? Again, their past health history. Family history, you'll see as we get into MI, family history plays a big part, you know, in um, somebody having a heart attack. I went to um, LPN school with the, uh, another woman and her husband, she had to actually do the corrections on him in the middle of the night. He coded on her at home, um, 42 I think he was, and his dad had died, his brother had died of the same thing. So family history plays a big part. Show social history, you know, are they big drinkers? Do they get out a lot? You know, what is their background with that? Have they had any diagnostic tests before they're here talking to you? You know, what have they already had done or what do you think we're gonna need to order? And any treatment, any medications? So that's our number. You're gonna always do a good history, not just the physical. So we're going to do some examinations of the system head to toe. Let me get the eyes up here. Let me get all these up here. And, well, let me go back. Ah. Okay, so ears, skin color. What are we looking for there? Mallory, what do you think we look for on their ears? Uh, maybe like, oh, I don't know, any signs of infection? Like if could they're be, Right. Um, they could have tachyitis. Um, their ears could be, um, you know, getting a little gray on us maybe, a little um, cyanotic. Same way with the skin color. We want to see what color is that skin, right? All over, not just their ears. Their eyelids, if you look at this person here, um, that is actually called xanthalysoplasma. So it's big cholesterol deposits. So high cholesterol, so that's a big indication that they could have an MI when they have high cholesterol. So if you see somebody with this, also in ears they used to say but they've changed it. it used to say if you ever see men with a lot of hair in their ears that used to be an indication of high cholesterol but they've changed that you don't hear that much anymore on that palms what are we looking for in their palms they could have yellowish lumps in their tendons so that could be a sign elbows could be the same way that could be like ischemia or psoriasis but it could also be um it's called xanthamus. So, sorry, what'd you say about their palms? Their palms, it could be uh, yellowish lumps in the tendons. You may see like lumps going through here. Seems like the high cholesterol always wants to show up as a yellowish. Their hands and neck, creases in their fingers. How many, you know, 
Uh, what does the fingers look like? Is there clubbing? Right. What do we look for in the neck with a lot of um, heart conditions? What are we looking for right here? JVD. 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 Good. Good. JVD. And the elbows, they will also have those um, yellowish on there. Okay, you guys all know how to do your inspect and palpate your pulses. There's just a picture of all the pulses. And where do we say to palpate for during your code situations, Michelle? Broaded. Broaded, yep. You may see some doctors will do femoral when they're during the code situation, but a lot of times it's gonna be broad. So here we go back to inspection. So the epigastric area. What are we looking for? Mrs. Music hasn't taught over this yet, but you will get to that. Anybody know what could show in the epigastric area? That there's something going on cardiac wise or? Could there be like a pulsation? Good. Pulsation, yeah. which is a triple A. Yes. Is that you, Summer? <laughs> yeah. Okay. I thought it was. Good job. Okay. Upper right quadrant. We're looking for tenderness, which could be like CHF. It has some tenderness there because of CHF. We talked about the elbows, high cholesterol. Nails, what are we looking for nails? Uh, Ashley. Um, clubbing. Clubbing, what else? <laughs> Cap refill. That's good. Mm -hmm. What else? Something simple. If they're cold or not. Cold, that's a good one. How about the color? Again, cyanotic. Cyanotic. Yeah. So cyanosis or clubbing, yep. Abdominal distension. Um, what do we call when their uh, abdomen is distended and really big? Ascites. Ascites. Ascites, good. What about anasarca? Who knows what anasarca is? hear that name. Isn't that like fluid around the abdomen specifically? It's actually generalized edema all over. Ascites is more the abdomen, which Mrs. Music will talk about that in her lectures too. But um, anasarca is generalized, okay? So the, the it could be the liver enlargement or liver failure because of the ascites, you might see that. Legs, anybody know? Whitney, what do you think about legs? What do we, whoop, I told you. Edema. Uh, edema, color. What about hair? What what does it mean when they don't have much hair on them? Circulation problem. Right, circulation problems. You know, a lot of people want to think about that. Um, temperature, are they tender to touch? You know, they may not be swollen, but they may be tender to touch. So all this is part of that physical assessment. So we're going to talk a little bit about percussion. As nurses, you will not usually do any percussion. Um, you're going to see doctors or maybe nurse practitioners doing that when they're in your patient's room. So dullness, that is over the heart, the liver, the spleen. That could mean pneumonia, or effusion, tumors. Flatness is over the bone or the muscle. Renaissance is the air-filled lungs, so it sounds hollow. Tympany, have you guys seen any, do, any doctors do this on the stomach or do it on your stomach in a physical, right? Checking, you know see if there's any air in there. It could also mean um, collapsed lung if they feel it. And then hyper renaissance is, um, it's hyper inflated like COPD, uh, pneumothorax. Okay, so you know your um, abdomen, whatever you wanna say, I got a couple different ones on here. You learned that first semester, right? Yes, second semester. Guys talking. <laughs> so there's just a couple different ones. Um, all people enjoy Time Magazine, Eight Demand, so you can remember, easy way to remember those. Okay, so our, um, I don't think this is going to work for me, but you can pull it up on your, um, when you listen to PowerPoint, listen to these sounds. So S1 or S2, if they're elongated or split, they're considered abnormal. S3 after S2 is associated with ventricular volume overload. 
So if you hear an S3 after S2, that's ventricular volume overload. When you pull up this PowerPoint, listen to all these, um, open up all these links and listen to how they sound different. Another way to understand S3 and S4, so S3 is a ventricular gallop, so it's heard immediately after S2. You're going to hear that in CHF, pulmonary hypertension, mitral valve regurgitation. Um, it could be normal for children and young adults. Adults older than 40, we're going to consider that abnormal. So S3, so there they're galloping. S4 is an atrial gallop, and that's heard immediately before S1. You're going to hear that in coronary heart disease, left ventricular hypertrophy, and aortic stenosis. So these will be hard to hear in clinical a lot. If you do um, have a patient with one, let, let the others know so they can listen too, because you're not going to hear a lot of these. But when you do have somebody with heart failure, maybe check it out, make sure they don't have this. Okay, heart murmurs, they're described a lot different. Um, I'm not going to get into where you got to know exactly, you know, how they're graded, this and that. Just know um, they occur during the heart muscle contraction. Diastolic occurs during the relaxation. Uh, continuous occurs through the cardiac cycle. So you may have patients that's gonna have a heart murmur. So you will um, hear that. My niece had a brain aneurysm and when she was in the hospital, they said, did you know you had a heart murmur? She never knew. So a lot of us may not even know we have one, but um, until it actually gets to a point where something's being done by it. So again, it's, Noted by timing, location, quality, pitch, intensity, and pattern. There is a scale. Um, as nurses, you're going to chart me that you heard their murmur, that they have one, but then the doctors will go into it more in depth. Okay, so these are some things that your patients are going to have. An echocardiogram is a transducer to view the heart. So a lot of your senior patients have it. EKG, of course, we know the graphic recording of the heart. We're going to check their lipids, right, to measure the risk for CAD. So is their cholesterol high, you know, is their good cholesterol too low, you know, or what's going on. Stress tests, we all, always want to see after they've had symptoms if they can do the stress test without having any symptoms, you know. They come in, they've had a heart attack or something, let's do a stress test before we send them home make sure they're okay to go home. We don't want them to start exercising and have another MI. Pericarditis is to remove fluid from the pericardial sac. We'll get into this more in the cardiac disorder lecture. And then PET scan is a myocardial infusion comparison. So when they have the PET scan, the areas light up that something's going on in. So it's a little bit more in depth than the MI. TEE, that's the visualization of the visualization of the heart not seen by the echo. So usually the back of the heart. Has anybody had a TEE or have seen one? My grandpa had one after his heart attack. Okay, okay. So what it is, I had one years ago. They are not fun. You are awake during it. So it's like they're doing a scope like an EGD. But you have to drink lidocaine to numb your mouth, and that's the nastiest stuff you'll ever taste. <laughs> your lips get big. So you drink that. They give you a little Demerol, a little Versed, or I think is what I had years ago. Um, but then you get and watch on the monitor as they go down and look at the back of your heart. So it's almost like a scope. So it's a, it's a little bit different, but that's a TE. So you may see here's some of your patients having that um, when you're in clinical you know, if you get a chance, go down and watch it. So it is interesting to watch. Okay, any questions about, I, it's a really short lecture. And like I said, it's gonna make more sense when we get into BMI, we'll re reiterate some of this stuff, but. Well, I will turn it over to 